Uh, kind of confusing, too. I reckon that's why they call him first, second, and third. Well, just holler and get acquainted with us. Well, uh, he ain't yet. Jethro invited him over here to meet us, but between you and me, I think it's Ellie Mae he wants to meet. Yeah. Jethro's always bragging about his pretty cousin. I told her there's a fella coming over to meet her, and she promised to put on her prettiest dress. Well, when that Armstrong doucher gets a look at Ellie, he's gonna forget what number he is. <laughs> huh? Over here, Ellie. <laughs> Ellie me, Clampett, they is a feller coming to see you. Well, what's wrong, Pa? I put on my prettiest dress. <laughs> Ellie me, look at your feet. <laughs> Ain't got no shoes on. Well, I'll go put them on. Come back, Ellie me. I just can't think of no quicker way to kill a romance than to meet a feller toting a skunk in your <laughs> Is this the Clampett residence? Yes, sir. Thank you. He's older than I figured. And where are you for? Just we didn't see was an army. It's all right, Jed. It's Confederate graves. <laughs> Well, howdy there. I'm Jed Clampett. Uh, this here is Granny, and I reckon you must be Armstrong Doozer McHugh the third. Oh, no, sir. The second? Uh, no, ma'am. That explains him being older. He's the first. <laughs> Jed, they're all Armstrongs here. Yes, sir, uh, you don't understand. Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Clampett, I am Armstrong Doozer McHugh the third. Well, howdy there, Armstrong. Fear you're might young for Ellie. Sir, I'm here to play with Jethro. We're classmates in the fifth grade. Uh, Granny, shake hands with Armstrong Doozer McHugh the third. Howdy, third. I am delighted to make your acquaintance. Mighty big spread of years between the first and the third. It appears to me the second would be just about right for Ellie. <laughs> Miss Jethro! Oh, please, sir, please. Master Armstrong is very delicate. Jethro won't hurt me. He's my friend. But you might get a nosebleed at that altitude. <laughs> Master Armstrong is under the care of several specialists. He's very sickly. Wilkins, please. Last week we had nurses around the clock. Even got a sick clock. <laughs> uh, Master Armstrong, please. Uh, you're not to get excited. Would you like a tranquilizer? No. Come on, everybody. Let's go in the house. I got some vittles cooking. One moment, please. I must go in the house before Master Armstrong. I'm sorry about Wilkins, but he has his orders. What in the Sam Hill are you doing? This is an allergy spray. He ain't got no allergies. <laughs> Master Armstrong has several. And spray him. <laughs> you don't understand. This spray settles the dust in the room. Dust in my house? Why, if you weren't wearing the uniform that I dearly love, I'd ram this down your throat and reach in and push the button. Granny, calm down. Well, I just mopped and cleaned in here just this morning. Madam, the air is filled with minute particles invisible to the naked eye. I don't see them. <laughs> Hope you brought your swimsuit, little doozy. We got a dandy big cement pond here. Oh, I'm afraid I don't know how to swim. Oh, Jethro will learn you. Sure. Oh, no, no. Master Armstrong's not allowed in the water. No wonder he's got all them allergies. A good hot bath with lye soap. That's what he needs. Lye soap? <laughs> Master Armstrong, I don't think I should leave you here. Please, Wilkins. Well, I'll take your temperature and blood pressure before I go. No, Wilkins, I feel fine. Oh, very well. With whom shall I leave the young master's schedule on rest, diet, medication, and telephone numbers of doctors? Well, if it's anything you do with doctor and granny, here's the best. Very well. There you are. Now then. Antihistamine pills, tranquilizers, acid pills, anti-acid pills, vitamins, iron, liver, yeast extract, antibiotics. Open up, Mr. Armstrong. It's time for your throat spray. Just a precautionary measure to see that he fights off the respiratory virus. 
that rascal comes around here, I'll fight him. <laughs> Over to school, all the big fellas is always picking on little dudes. But not when Jet was around. Oh, I almost forgot. The oxygen tent is in the car. Where shall I set it up? <laughs> tent? Uh, yes, sir. Master Armstrong usually spends an hour a day in it. Oh, you like camping, do you? <laughs> <laughs> he does. He's as happy as an itchy pig rubbing against a real fence. Speaking of pigs, I got some hog jowl stewing and a possum pie in the oven for this little feller's lunch. Come on. Hog jowl? <laughs> possum pie? <laughs> do you intend to feed those things to Master Armstrong? Why, don't he eat that good at home? <laughs> oh, he has an extremely delicate digestive system. At present, he's on a diet of special Swiss yogurt. <laughs> we hunted all over Beverly Hills to find it. Get through, get out your rifle and hunt down one of them Swiss yogurts. <laughs> okay, Uncle Jed. Oh, uh, I'll take a little doozy along to make sure I shoot the right kind. <laughs> sure, reckon Granny will know how to cook it once she sees it. Is it run or fly? <laughs> Neither. Yogurt is inanimate. It just uh, lies there. <laughs> Ain't gonna be much sport to shoot, Jethro. <laughs> That's a fact. Hey, has anybody seen little Charlie? A dog! Go away. Master Armstrong's allergic to all animals. <laughs> Ellie! Curly back in the kitchen. Ah! A skunk! <laughs> oh, city feller, I wouldn't do that if I was you. He might just return the favor. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You've all finished. Go right ahead and chuck it in there, young fella. Looks like you could use a little fattening up. That's a fact. I've thrown away chicken bones with more meat on them than he's got. <laughs> you want some more, little doozy? Oh, no, thank you. It was most delicious. I'd like to tell Chef how to make that. Who, oh, Chef? Oh, he's a fella that does the cooking over at Doozy's house. A man in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah, Granny. You ought to see him. Cooks in a great big white hat. Well, the first thing to tell him to do is to get rid of the hat and do his cooking in a pot. <laughs> well, how come your ma don't do the cooking, little Doozy? Who? Your ma. Oh, Mother, I don't believe she knows where the kitchen is. On her rare visits home, I've never seen her there. Visits home? My mother and father spend most of their time traveling. Oh, drummers, huh? <laughs> what do they sell? Well, they don't work. They just travel. How come? I really don't know. I imagine they enjoy it. Well, don't you miss your mom and Paul? Oh, they write to me regularly, every month or two. I have a marvelous collection of foreign stamps. And he always telephoned me on my birthday. That's right, friendly of them. <laughs> and who looks after you, little doozy? Oh, mostly the governess. Governess? She's married to Wilkins. Did you hear that, Granny? That fella to bring him over here is the governor. I still don't give him no right to tell me I got dust in my house. <laughs> you folks have so much fun. I never even laugh at home. Well, little feller, any time you feel like busting out laughing, you come right on over. Excuse me. Come on, little doozy. You promised to help me with my homework. He's the smartest kid in school. Oh, I'd rather be able to swim and climb trees like you. Well, you help me with history, and I'll teach you to swim and tree climb. I spoke to young Master Armstrong, and he told me to tell you that he ain't ready to go home yet. He's having too much fun. He's not permitted to have fun. It's bad for his blood pressure. Well, I'll tell him when he comes down out of the top of that tree. He's in the tree? Say, that little rascal can climb like a squirrel. As soon as his hands get toughened up, he'll be as good as Ellie Mae. I insist upon taking him home immediately. I told you, he didn't want to go home yet. That makes no difference. He's going. Hold on a minute. I don't want to tangle with no soldier in the Confederate grave. This is not a Confederate uniform. Now remove your hand and lead me to Master Armstrong. And if and I don't? I'll have to take him by force. Is that a fact? Like Grant took Richmond. What did you say? I shall take him like Grant took Richmond. That's what I thought you said. Ah! <laughs>
I'll be back. Well, you better bring Grant with you and his whole army. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Chief, but Wilkins here has an urgent problem concerning young Armstrong Deuce McHugh III. Now, what is it? Well, to fill you in, Chief, Armstrong Deuce McHugh III's father, Armstrong Deuce McHugh II, has appointed the bank executor of his will, administrator of his estate, and guardian of Armstrong Deuce McHugh III in case something should happen to Mr. and Mrs. Armstrong Deuce McHugh II. And that is why Wilkins here, and very wisely, has come to you in this crisis. What is the crisis? I forgot. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, young Master Armstrong is being held a prisoner. Call the FBI. <laughs> Do you know who has him? A hillbilly family called the Clampets. J. Edgar Hoover, please. Never mind, hang on. Wilkins, the Clampets are my next door neighbors, my largest depositors, and my personal friends. And the very salts of the earth. <laughs> Sorry, Chief. But, Mr. Drysdale, young Master Armstrong is extremely frail and delicate. And the Clampets refuse to give him the proper food or rest or medication. They're exposing him to great danger. Get the Clampets on the phone. They won't harm the boy. But I'm afraid they already have. They've got him climbing trees and... and eating possum pie. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> but they're violent people. Granny threatened me with a shotgun. What did you say about the South? <laughs> the South what? <laughs> Granny! Jane Hathaway here. Could you call young Armstrong Deuce McHugh III to the telephone? I don't hardly think so. He went out of the cement pond to swim. Thank you, Granny. Goodbye. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. Master Armstrong is in swimming. But he doesn't know how to swim. <laughs> but, Jethro, I don't know how to swim. Oh, don't let that worry you, little doozy. We can learn anybody. Why, heck, Ellie May even learned her cat. Come on, Rusty. Look there. <laughs> Did you have a good swim? See, little doozy? There's nothing to it. Now, you just watch me and do as I do. Come on, little doozy. I'm afraid, Jethro. You got nothing to be afraid of. Why, Ellie Mee is right here. And Rusty, too. I'll do it if Big Jethro commands me to. Big Jethro says, dive in and swim. Look, Jethro, I'm swimming. You sure are, little doozy. You just done swim right out of your swimming suit. <laughs> Nobody won't get hurt none. Can you really teach me to defend myself against those big bullies at school? You betcha. Now come at me like you're fixing to hurt me. <laughs> I really ought to learn you on someone bigger than myself. Mr. Pooh Man? Yes, Miss Clampett. Would you help us out for a minute, please? Why, certainly. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to learn this here young fella how to protect himself. Now you come at me like you're fixing to hurt me. Oh, I don't think I'd better. I was in the Marines, you know, and they taught us some pretty rough tactics. Yeah! <laughs> By any chance, were you in the 3rd Battalion? <laughs> Try that, little doozy. It works! Now, I'll tell you what you can do. You will yourself a whole bunch of these, different sizes, time to get a side by each. You can play a real tune. But I don't have a knife, sir. Well, I'll tell you what. If you promise to handle it real careful, like I showed you, safety first, don't cut yourself. You can have this one. Gee, thank you, Uncle Jed. You know, by rights, I ain't your Uncle Jed. Just Jethro. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Clampett. But seeing as how you're such a good friend of Jethro's, you can call me Uncle Jed. Now remember.
December 3rd. And you gotta keep your eye on the cork. When the cork starts bobbing around in the water, then you know that a fish is nosing around the bait. And then, when the cork all of a sudden ducks under the water, then you know old Mr. Fish has grabbed the bait. And you pull him out. Can I hold the line, Mrs. Granny? Sure, you might as well get the feel of it. I caught something! Oh, you couldn't have. There's nothing in there. It felt like a whale. Help me! <laughs> I figured I'd let little Lucy see what it was like to catch a big old catfish. <laughs> You hold it kind of loose this way, you bring your arm back, and just as you let it fly, you give it a little spin. You watch. Perfect ringer, Uncle Jack. Yeah. And well, you try. <laughs> you see how handy it is to be able to climb a tree? <laughs> Cheer, Wilkins. I am confident that we shall find everything here in possum pot. <laughs> Apple pie order. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Well, Miss Jane, Mr. Wilkins, come on in. Gonna bake a tater pie to give to little dudes. And it'll taste so good his toes will curl up in his shoes. <laughs> to make a tater pie, it takes a lot of possum fat. <laughs> I don't think that fellow chef can make it in his hat. Greetings, <laughs> Granny. Oh, hey. Thought I told you to secede from these parts. Oh, uh, Granny. <laughs> Madam, I demand to see Master Armstrong immediately. Shh, don't wake him up. He's taking his nap. Yeah, you see, he's getting his rest. Needs it, too. Poor little fellow's all tuckered out. Which bedroom is he in? He's napping right out there in the sun. The sun? <laughs> This skin is far too sensitive to be exposed to ultraviolet rays. <laughs> He's allergic to animals. <laughs> Look, I'm not going home. I feel fine. You're coming home and have an antiseptic bath and then spend an hour in your oxygen tent. Wilkins, I'm not going. Then I'll take you by force. You will. Like Grant took Richmond. 